Beginning on Wednesday, January 25, 1978, Ohio was paralyzed by a snowstorm that came to be known as the Blizzard of 78, the worst blizzard on record for the Buckeye State. Transportation, schools, and businesses were shut down for days. The storm dumped vast amounts of snow across the region and caused widespread hurricane-strength wind gusts that heaped snow into enormous drifts. A legend to those who lived through it, this once-in-a-lifetime storm will always be the standard by which future winter storms are judged. To be considered a blizzard, a winter storm must produce sustained winds or frequent gusts greater than 35 miles per hour and be accompanied by falling and or blowing snow that frequently reduces visibility to less than one quarter mile for three hours or more. Generally, temperatures will be 20 degrees or lower with a blizzard. A severe blizzard, however, is characterized by wind speeds of 45 miles per hour or higher and is accompanied by a great density of falling and or blowing snow that frequently reduces visibilities to near zero, along with temperatures generally 10 degrees or less. The powerful blizzard of 1978 was a true severe blizzard, the most intense grade of winter storm. This severe blizzard was the result of a relatively rare merger of two low pressure systems, one that descended south from Canada and another that rose north out of the Gulf of Mexico. The merger of the two low pressure systems caused the resulting storm to undergo explosive cyclogenesis as it moved rapidly northward during the evening of January 25th. To be classified as undergoing explosive cyclogenesis, a storm's central pressure must drop at least 24 millibars, or an average of 1 millibar per hour, over a 24 hour period. The blizzard of 78, by comparison, dropped a remarkable 40 millibars in that span of time. The resultant massive and powerful storm system produced some of the lowest pressure readings ever recorded in the United States mainland that were not associated with hurricanes. In fact, several weather stations in the storm's path had to readjust their barographs as station pressures fell below the initial chart scale. These readings set new records for the lowest sea level pressures ever recorded at each station. Cleveland's record low pressure reading on January 26 was 28.28 inches, which remains the lowest pressure ever recorded in Ohio and one of the lowest pressure readings on record within the mainland United States not associated with a hurricane. Rain and fog were widespread across the region during the evening hours of January 25, 1978, with temperatures generally in the 30s and 40s. As a result, most members of the public had no idea that such a powerful winter storm would soon descend upon them. However, meteorologists across the region were quickly realizing what was about to happen. National Weather Service offices across the Great Lakes and Upper Ohio Valley had issued blizzard warnings for most of the region by the late evening hours of January 25th. Early the next morning, the Arctic air mass pushed into the area with bitter cold temperatures and howling winds. Blizzard conditions arrived in Cincinnati around 1 a.m. January 26th and reached Dayton, Columbus, and Toledo within the next couple of hours. By 7 a.m., blizzard conditions extended all the way to Akron and Cleveland. Visibilities were near zero for much of the day and even into the 27th. Temperatures rapidly plunged from the 30s to bitter cold single digits in just a few hours. Winds averaged 50 to 70 miles per hour for much of the day on the 26th, gusting up to 100 miles per hour at times. Extremely cold wind chills around minus 50 degrees or lower continued throughout the day, making it especially dangerous to venture outside. While snowfall was difficult to measure due to the strong winds, official storms total snowfall amounts from January 25th to 27th ranged from a foot across Ohio to nearly two feet in the northwesternmost counties. Drifts resulting from the heavy snow and strong winds were a staggering 10 to 20 feet in height, covering vehicles and sometimes entire homes. As the blizzard raged on, the National Weather Service labeled the event a storm of unprecedented magnitude, reflecting the incredible strength and intensity of the system. Fortunately, the early morning arrival of the blizzard prompted officials to close nearly all schools on the 26th, which prevented children from being stranded at school or on buses. In fact, Ohio schools did not reopen until early the following week. President Jimmy Carter declared a federal disaster in Ohio on the 26th and in Indiana the following day. Meanwhile, area governors activated the National Guard in several states. Thousands of men and women on active duty put in many long hours to help clear roadways, restore power, deliver food and medicine, and transport medical personnel to hospitals. Members of the National Guard resorted to using bulldozers and tanks fitted with plows to clear the extremely heavy snow. In many instances, the only means of rescuing individuals with medical emergencies was by helicopter. Across the region, thousands of volunteers with snowmobiles and four-wheel drive vehicles also risked their lives to transport emergency personnel and utility workers, as well as to deliver medical necessities to those in need. Radio stations suspended regular programming to provide storm information and to serve as communication links where other means of communication had failed. 
The death toll from this epic winter storm rose to over 70 across the region. This included 51 in Ohio. Most deaths resulted from individuals being stranded in cars or homes with no heat, while a few were crushed when the roofs caved in under the heavy weight of the snow. Agricultural losses from the storms totaled around $73 million in Ohio as a result of dead livestock, lost production, property damage, and milk and egg losses. It was nearly two weeks before life returned to normal across the state. Incredible stories of survival and bravery emerged after the passing of the storm. As is observed after nearly every natural disaster, Mother Nature's fury brought out the very best of humanity. But as for those who lived through the blizzard of 78, the great storm would be forever etched in their memory. And now it's time for a little science experiment with our friend Phil Kelly from ABC6. Alright, so we are here with Phil Kelly today and he is here to work with us with some dry ice and talk about sublimation, the process of that and uh, what goes on. Yeah, well I use this when I go, we go out and do school talks, so I want to do something that's really visual to the kids and something that's not too much over their head, something that they can kind of get, but also something that will interest them in science. Yeah. And I found that this, dropping dry ice in water, what it does is it's, is it's going to make a cloud. Okay. Uh, we talk about sublimation, which is the process where it goes from a solid to a uh, gas. Okay. So, and then we can show that. And we talk about it beforehand, we talk about the water cycle. So I say, okay, what happens when you lay a uh, ice cube on the, on the ground and then it melts into a liquid and then you come back and it's evaporated. So this shows that uh, we, we miss that liquid state. So it goes straight from a solid into a uh, gas and we should demonstrate that by dropping it in here and it makes it visual and, the, and then you can blow on it and the kids go, ah, yeah. and make it fun. So That's we try cool. to make science fun. So you need a glove, good, yeah. I'm glad you have a glove. All you need is regular water, and then you just drop it in. This big piece of dry ice here. And I hope it doesn't. Oh, there we go. So see, there you go. So what I did, so what this demonstrates, and I, what I tell the kids, it's like taking a straw and blowing into your drink or something. Um, you're adding, you're basically adding air to the water here. And this is really, you know, the, when it's pouring over like this, I mean, yeah. how visual, you know, the kids love this. And then you got, and then blow on it, and everybody's like, ah! But uh, this demonstrates a uh, neat, it, it, it introduces them to a uh, new word, sublimation, yeah. and uh, gives them an idea of, uh, you know, how cool science can be. Because a lot of times, you know, I mean, I'm not try, I, I'm trying to teach a ton when I do my weather talks. I'm trying to teach a few things. So if they can come away with a little bit of knowledge of one or two things, um, it, it's really just kind of sparking that interest in science so that they see this and they're like, wow, what other kind of cool experiments yeah. are there? And then we can, re you know, and I so uh, re relate that to weather when we talk about the water cycle and how this doesn't do that. Yeah, I mean, so. this is an awesome experiment to just show. Um, right. I mean, it's just, you know, and, and I, and you can get dry ice, you know, a lot of places, but and you got to be 18. So I always yeah. tell the kids, you got to be careful, and they're always very interested in. Well, the stuff can be dangerous. Yeah, it can be dangerous because you don't want to. You know, they talk about, well, can you touch it? And I say, no, I'm because you know you can get frostbite, mm -hmm. and you know you can't put it in your drink because you can't ingest it at all. So, but it's it, it's a safe experiment to do at school. Um, other stuff that I try to because I was trying to come up with a few things, and you know, would involve fire, and I was like, it's probably not a good idea to like heat the air and try to do something with fire in a school because you just try to think of all the things that can go wrong. Right. Right? So this is kind of a safe experiment and really something that's very visual that the uh, kids really enjoy. But so, it, and it takes forever. I was going to say, so how long a brick that size, how it, long will this go on? Uh, that was probably, what, a pound or two pounds? Yeah. Uh, half hour. Oh wow! Yeah, that's, that'll be that's cool. <laughs> so a lot of times, um, that's why I save this till the end. Because if I did, if I did this at the beginning, the kids, I would that's lose. That's all them. they would. Yeah, focus that's on. all they would focus on. This thing going for and just going for a full hour. So, um, you know, uh, this is uh, this is a fun trick, and it really it kind of it amps them up, and then I can send them back to the teachers. Yeah. So. Well, this is a really cool way to uh, learn about weather. Yeah. So we really appreciate you coming out and doing this for us. Anytime, I love this. Thank you for watching Buckeye State Weather. We hope you've learned a little about the types of weather seen in Ohio. And maybe a few ways to keep yourself and your family safe when Mother Nature unleashes her fury. And you how about that super cool experiment? And how about those unforgettable storms, huh? Hey, it was a great day with all of you learning about what goes on in the skies above. I'm Derek Weatherman Witt. And I'm Holly Stormenstall. As always, stay, stay tuned, tuned for, for more updates. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
of the bee, of the bee, and that's all, folks. <laughs>